So I've got here a Briggs & Stratton lawnmower. It's a Rover lawnmower with a Briggs & Stratton engine, four horsepower, which my parents bought 20 years ago. Um, the lawnmower is in pretty good condition. However, um, however, the lawnmower, um, when you start and rev it up, it cannot maintain idle. To me, it seems like there is a mixture problem with the carburetor. It's letting air in, and as a result, the engine revs up and down. So I'm just going to show you what the engine looks like. It's a four horsepower. This one's got a quattro. Um, so it's about 20 years old. And you've got this side of the engine and the back. So I'm going to open this this lawnmower and replace the carburetor or the gaskets in the carburetor. And I have bought a kit from uh, online. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this bolt and that one over there to get this plastic cover off. Um... And then I will proceed to unscrew that screw to get the air filter off. So I've um, taken off the cover. As you can see, the cover's over there. And there's the air filter. So if you have a look, I've, the engine is exposed and the carburetor is here. I should say, over the course of 20 years, um, I've had to maintain it. And one thing I had to do was to put silicon on this rubber hose because um, the rubber hose, this little fitting, it stretches. And this is a blow-by hose. So I put silicon here to stop dirt getting inside and causing an air leak. I'm now going to remove this bolt here. There's a bolt here. Uh, this bolt here. These two bolts here. This one here. And this one over here which is the cable that goes to the carburetor. I'm going to mark this so I know how to put it together. And then I'll be able to get off this cover and see, get access to the carburetor. And also see um, if there's any leaks on the intake tube that goes towards the engine. Okay, so I've taken the cover off the lawnmower and the cover is sitting there with the cable still attached, that particular cable here. And I've also taken the air filter off. So if you have a look, this is the engine. Now, it doesn't hurt to get a screwdriver and just clean out these fins because you get grass in here and it blocks the cooling of the engine head, which is this thing here. Also, get like an old toothbrush and just brush and just clean off the dirt over the engine in this area. So um, this is the intake pipe, which goes to the carburetor. And the air goes through here, through this. This is the the butterfly. This is the governor. Um, governor Springs is two. These can be purchased online for $8 if you, they are broken. And this is the intake. And then if I just go like that, you've got the exhaust over here. So um, I'm just going to show the picture of the engine. So that's what it looks like. And... Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is, I guess if, what you need to check for is, is there any air leaks? Is this okay? To me, it seems okay. There's there's a gasket there, but I'm not going to open this. This seems okay. And I'm going to check if there's an air leak here. This is the carburetor. And I'm going to, well, in order to do that, what I'll do is I'm going to remove this particular bolt and this particular bolt in the front. And I should be able to pull this whole assembly, the fuel tank with the carburetor, off. Um... And just quickly, I just want to explain how the governor works on this lawnmower. So you've got the cable, the throttle cable, which connects to this. And I'm just going to show you this butterfly. So that butterfly is in the closed position. So can you see how that's closed? So when you pull on this throttle, the butterfly opens, as you just noticed. This is open, full speed, closed. So if you pull on this, the springs pull the butterfly open. As the engine spins... Air blows out of here and causes this governor flap to close, closes that way, close the butterfly. And then it sort of reaches a balance where the engine is in, in constant speed. So with this rotation, how much air is blown here and how much you pull on the lever, which creates a tension. And this thing is balanced. Now, if you cut tall grass, the engine slows down. The flap then goes back that way. And this speeds up. If you don't have much grass and the engine spins fast, the air blows more, pulls the flap, 
and reduces the engine speed and you have a balance this is what a gov this is a governor on a Briggs and Stratton using airflow from the engine cooling fan um, the springs are okay and as I said the idle goes up and down on this lawnmower so this looks okay so I suspect it's something to do with the carburetor which I'm going to open by opening that bolt and this one here in the front and taking this off okay I've just as I said I undid the bolt on the front and the bolt on the side I've taken that component off which is here the shield that stops the air this shield is stops the air from leaking out now this is the carburetor and if you have a look very closely this is the intake the o-ring and the covers come off but as you, if you have a look there's no air leak here see how clean it is and look at the pipe it's very clean and the same goes for this where the blow-by engine blow-by this is a blow-by hose which comes from here um, and that's a blow-by gas which gets consumed in the engine into here so I put silicon here because this hose um, gets old so if you have um, I'm happy with that. Now I should say that when you take this carburetor off, it sort of goes in, and then um, there's this the, the the butterfly. See this the 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 governor. This is the governor. Just gonna zoom out. That's the governor, and there's that little linkage, and that linkage connects to that hole there. And in order to get it in, I'm just going to zoom in again. In order to get it in, what you need to do is, I'm just going to go very close. It's a matter of, just going to move this here. Okay. So in order to get the linkage in, it's a matter of, I'm going to just push this back. So the linkage actually, if you have a look, you sort of have to tilt it and get it in and then push it back down like that. So when you take, when you pull this out, tilt like that to untake the linkage off. So I'm just going to show whether there, see that hole. So yeah, once again, a bit hard to do this while recording. That linkage, this linkage here goes in that hole. That one there. This is the butterfly. And here is the butterfly inside the carburetor. I'm now going to proceed to um, unscrew one, two. There's a screw here and there's a screw um, there. And remove this carburetor and check if there's dirt inside the jets within the carburetor. Okay, so I've got the carburetor of the lawnmower just there, and I ordered a new one, um, and this is what I got. So I searched for the particular model lawnmower, and I got this, and it's uh, made in China. And what I got with it was, for $20, I got the carburetor. So you can see, here's the carburetor. I got some um, five screws and two gaskets. Now this whole thing was $20. If I wanted the whole tank and the carburetor assembled, $30. So $10 more would have got the whole assembly and all I had to do was just put into the lawnmower. Now I just want to say that this particular carburetor that Briggs and Stratton make does, does not have a choke. So it has a butterfly here. And in that butterfly, the jet is here. So if I open this, there's only one butterfly and inside it's hard to see, but there is a jet, and that's what that's a fueling. The longer hose sucks fuel from the bottom of the tank. So if this sits here, that longer hose, the one that's just there, sucks fuel from the bottom. So when you push the primer button, this one here, when you push that, it lets the fuel, it lets the fuel into that little jet. Well, there's a little jet here. And that's how you get the choke on this particular um, carburetor. So this particular carburetor does not have a float bowl, but it has a secondary little bowl here, which has a little cut to let fuel overflow. And the secondary bowl takes the fuel from here. Now it's got a spring and it's got a diaphragm here. 
with a little hole. Um, there you go. You can see the little hole, which takes vacuum pulsations from the intake and causes this diaphragm, which is against the spring, to pulsate, and it takes the fuel from this hose and pumps into the secondary bowl, the float bowl. So this does not have a float bowl, but it has a little pump that pumps the fuel, a diaphragm pump that pumps the fuel from here, this hose, into a secondary float bowl. Um, I guess the advantages would be that um, this type of lawnmower engines vibrate a, lot, a vibrate a lot and float bowls, a float would wear out. Whereas this system, you know, if the lawnmower's going on hills and inclines, the float bowl the float doesn't change position here the fuel is also always at a constant level over many years so this lawnmower pumps fuel with it this is a spring there's a diaphragm and it pumps fuel due to pulsations in the um, intake which causes the diaphragm to move there's a hole there and against the spring and the diaphragm goes up and down and if you have a look it's a two-layered carburetor so if I just go here Sorry, you've got this, not too low, sorry, you've got this and it's a bit raised here. So there is two gaskets, I've got. I've been given two gaskets, but it just pumps the fuel into the secondary bowl. So I'm just going to open it, I'm going to, I'm going to tip the fuel out and open the screws and see what's uh, inside. Yeah, I've just opened the carburetor, as you can see it's sitting there, and all the screws are equal length. This is an aftermarket carburetor made out of plastic. Um, and if you have a look, I found the problem. So this is a secondary intake. And if you look at all the dirt, and the dirt in the secondary float, I guess you could say it's the, in other lawnmowers have a float bowl, but this just has a secondary chamber and there's an overflow, and fuel gets pumped in here. And look at all this dirt. This lawnmower has no filter. The, the, the carburetor and the fuel tank are one, in Honda lawnmowers, uh, you have the fuel tank, a little fuel filter, a ho uh, hose in the fuel filter, and then you have the f a carburetor. But this one doesn't, and look at the dirt, and that's been blocking the fuel into the intake, hence causing the surge in uh, engine revolutions at high RPMs. Um, so I guess I'll have to decide whether I want to use the old carburetor with the new gaskets, um, or... I can just use this new one, which is a, which is a um, copy. I'm not quite sure if it's a copy or a new one uh, with the new gaskets. So there you have it. There's a problem. So if you have a Briggs and Strand lawnmower and it's not um, idling at high RPMs properly, you'll need to have a look and look at the dirt inside over 20 years of use. So this and uh, and uh, yeah. So this is what happened. Okay. Okay, so I'm just cleaning it, and you can see that the carburetor, I've just cleaned this. This actually can come off, and I've just rinsed this in some um, petrol from the tank. Now, I'm just, it makes me, and I've also cleaned this a little bit. I have to get some more dirt out, and it makes me question why this happened. So, when I look at this carburetor, the gaskets look okay, but um, over here, where the, where the diaphragm is, see how it's a little bit thin on this edge and I wonder whether dirt got su got um, sucked into here through this diaphragm and then got into the chamber because there's an awful lot of dirt um, so if you have a look can you see how the gasket's thinning the gasket is um, thinning there see the rubber diaphragm and maybe that's why all the dirt got into that chamber so look I could have I could have ordered the gasket kit for say eight dollars or a couple of dollars and just replace this. There's two gaskets here, a paper one first, and then then the rubber one, which is uh, here, and paper one first, and just put it back together and it will work. So I may um, I'll install the new one with a new gasket, because over time what happens is the carburetor also develops a free play in the butterfly, and this one's made out of plastic, and look it, it'll probably work, but um, it's just a like there's a little bit of I can I say free play and then there's a sponge gasket here and that also perishes where's this sponge gasket here in the new one if I can just focus see the sponge gasket there it's a uh, it's, it's a bit more better condition so okay 
So I'm putting in the paper gasket first onto the new carburetor and you match it up, it's just a, the holes and then I'm going to put in this rubber gasket which has the diaphragm um, that acts as a pump, this one here on the spring to pump fuel into the secondary uh, chamber similar to a float bowl in standard type carburetors. What I did was I opted to put the rubber gasket first, that, that the one there, and then the paper one on top, and then I put the, this carburetor down. Um, and I've just noticed they've revised the gasket design, and the rubber gasket actually protrudes more, as you can see there. And because that is a failure point, as noted in this cut gasket from 20 years ago. So if you have a look, um, if I just zoom in a bit, you can see there, see how the rubber gasket has has broken away and um and that's what's let the air uh, the dirt in but if you look on the new design the gasket actually protrudes out and hopefully it stops the failure and then i'm now gonna i just put the screws in gently just make sure it's nicely sitting in and i'm going to tighten the screws i've opted to use the factory screws because the screws that came with the um the screws that came with the carburetor kit these ones i mean they would still work but they just had a slightly smaller head so less surface area to clamp uh, clamp down on the plastic okay so I've got the new carburetor put onto the tank and I'm gonna just attach this back into these two hoses and put it back the way I opened it um, another thing just to note is just tape this ignition lead put some electrical wire here and see when it goes in it doesn't sh um, rub against this metal and short out the ignition lead and that's your magneto there so i just put a bit of electrical tape there just to you know protect the wire so i'm going to put the carburetor back in and put everything else back okay so i've just put the carburetor in um one screw there bolt one over there and connecting this hose also the linkage the linkage there put the linkage back in and I put a bit of silicon see this rubber hose just around there and also around this so can you see the silicon around this hose because I find that this is a new hose but it wears out and dust may get in and I've also put silicon on the thread of this bolt and some silicon on the head and that's just to stop the bolt from unwind, unscrewing itself due to the vibration of the engine. I mean, I could have used Loctite if I wanted to, but I do find that on this lawnmower, the vibration causes the actual bolts to unscrew themselves. And you, you have to be careful. You can't tighten these bolts too tight because it's an aluminium uh, engine, and aluminium is a soft metal. So just tighten the bolts, one, to push this in, uh, put the linkage in, and yeah, just not too tight. Okay, so I'm now going to uh, put the engine cover back on. So I've done this, now I can put the engine cover back on, the air filter. So here's the engine cover, this one here. Um, I have to put the air filter back on and that plastic cover at the very end. And just remember also, this is also part of the carburetor so see there's like a bushing here and this has to go there and the same applies on this side too this cover here with the bolt and the guard okay next step okay i've put the engine cover back on so just one bolt there one over here um this one here and these two one two that hold this fuel um fuel nozzle uh, oil nozzle oil dipstick now i should say that the threads of each of these bolts um i put a bit of rtv um silicon on the thread so or you can put loctite so these bolts don't come under, undone and as i said don't over tighten it just hand tight like reasonably tight not too tight because this is an aluminium uh, engine so the metal's very soft. So I've now got to put the air filter and that plastic 
cover back on and see if it works. Okay, so I've put the engine cover back on using one, two screws. Um, I've also put the air filter back in, put a new air filter in, and make sure that when you put the engine cover on, connect this linkage. And I'm, I've added petrol and I'm going to start it to see how it goes. Okay, so as you can see, the lawnmower is working, it's uh, idling fine. And if I was to increase the RPMs, it, it's, the idle is stable. If I slow down the speed, and it can run at slow speed. I, I did also did a quick oil change by draining the oil out of the oil filler cap. So once again, if I the issue was if I turned up the speed, if I turned up the speed, the idle would be unstable, and it's not the case now. So it seems to be. So there you 